Hi right, everyone, uh, welcome back. So uh, I hope you have been uh, trying to do the exercises, the ungraded ones. Uh, we have been informed that there is some issue uh, which, is which is only effective few of you when you try to save an existing favorite items, uh, which gives an error. Uh, our team is trying to identify that error, but looks like it may be uh, associated with some bug also. So in that case, in case if you encounter this uh, error, what you can do is rather than trying to say edit and save an existing favorite item, try to make a make that favorite item. So you can open a bank, I mean, we create new uh, visualization and configure the data dimension and then finally save it. So I think that will help you to uh, resolve that issue. Yeah, please uh, use the Slack channel in uh, if you have any, any issues, please uh, raise it raise it uh, on that one. I think uh, it'd be much easier than uh, mentioning on the Zoom. Okay, so uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next session. Fine. Uh, so now what you're going to do next is like, we'll be exploring different chart types one by one. And while doing that, we will also explore a few other options which are there in the data visualizer uh, uh, when we try to uh, make different customizations. Okay. So what we will do next is now that we, are, we have done a column and line, uh, let's try to do a stacked column chart, right? So what, what, we, what we have to do once we are inside the uh, uh, data visualizer is first to select uh, the chart type, which is the stacked column, right? This is done. And then we have to decide and set the data dimensions, right? So through the three dimensions, I will first start with data. So I will first of all, select the data, which is, let me take the HIV tests perform. Okay. So to do that, I will click on data elements and let me type HIV tests perform, right? This is the one. I double click on it and select it and I hide it, right? And the organization unit, uh, let me just do some changes. I'm clicking on organization unit. Currently it is a training land. I will keep training land and at the level, let me select district. So what we essentially do here, is like we filter all the data that is coming to the visualization to the training land and the level at which uh, the, the disaggregation happens, we define at district, okay, right. And I hide it, right. So the period type, um, let me check what is the period type that is there, which, okay, that is last 12 months. I will just keep it as it is. Now I have set all three series category and filter. Let me click on update, right. fine. Now that I have clicked on update, um, yeah, uh, Jin, you have any questions? You are unmuted. I hope not. Okay, fine. Yeah. Fine. So this is the visualization that we get. Okay. So here, of course, uh, we don't see anything much, even though it's a stacked column. We just uh, see plain columns, right? And the x-axis is obviously the period, and the y-axis the data values. And here we see the district levels in training land, right? That's how uh, the data has been configured in this visualization. Okay, any questions? I hope not, right. Now to make the maximum use of this type of uh, chart, which is a stacked column, we need to stack this column, right? Currently only one item is displayed. So to do that, let me add one other dimension, right? Here we have the available dimensions. I'm going to select this one, urban rural. So I click here, okay? And then I'm, I'm going to add it to the series. I click on add to series, right? Then I select all three of them. And finally, I click on update, right? When I do this, you can now see the, my chart changes. So if I repeat what I did just now, I uh, focused on these di available dimensions, right? And I clicked on urban rural and add to series. And it has come here. 
So you can see what are what is available in the series dimension. It has changed. Previously, it was the data that is there, and now it's the series. Okay. So uh, if we try to focus our attention on how these three uh, options have been configured, now you can see if everything in this visualization is uh, filtered based on. Uh, Sorry, questions? Junaid, uh, you have a question? Okay. Fine. Uh, so we see that uh, everything that you see in this visualization has been filtered by the organization unit, which is training land by district level. And the data is also filtered. That means like we are not doing any changes uh, in the layout for this org unit and the data. But now in the layout, what has happened is the categories is last 12 months. That is why we are seeing the 12 months in the x-axis and the series, uh, we have urban and rural. So what has actually happened is, uh, the category dimension, what the series does is it groups the category dimension. So it has been grouped. And because we have selected stacked column, you are seeing that these values have been stacked. Okay, right. I hope it is clear up to this point. Fine. Now I have a question. Um, if we want the organization units to be in our X axis, in order to display the number of HIV tests performed within each locality by district. What are the changes we have to do to the organization unit dimension? Let me repeat, if we want to have the organization units to be in our x-axis, what changes do we have to do? I think you can put the we can put the organization in the uh, category category and update the chart. Okay, let's let's try to do that. I move organization unit into categories as you suggested, and I click on update. What actually happened? What happened? I hope uh, this was not what you expected, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, what what are other changes should I do? Maybe the period should be in filter section. Exactly. Okay. We'll just put the period to filter so that we will have a less uh, crowded, less complicated chart. I will explain what happened here a bit later, but I will just move the period here and click on update, and this is what we get. So, this is good enough, right? Uh, as per our expectation. Okay, right. Fine. So are you happy with this visualization? Everyone? Yes, no? Okay, somewhat. What do you think? This is okay. Yeah, well, actual, actual, as I was seeing, it depends uh, on what you want to show. So if we want me to show uh the uh, for each and every district the the distribution of um uh, urban nulo and the peri urban this can be okay mm -hmm. so uh, right now in this visualization we are seeing uh data for all the districts and for all the districts we are seeing this uh, disaggregation by urban rural and peri urban so that is all there so that means um this is good enough right or or anything you would like to do to make it better. Oh, any any disadvantage in this particular uh, uh, visualization we are having? Yes, uh, I see the in Sweet District, um, <clears throat> all three categories are performed, periphery, rural, and urban, but uh, uh, it's not clear. Not clear, okay. Why it is not clear? What has happened? Why does it make it not clear? What's the issue? Issue is with the Swede district? Yeah, of course. Or else, uh, like, what has gone wrong here? Not wrong, but what, what actually uh, contributes to uh, this type of a visualization? Yeah, some districts, the values is, I mean, it's not that clear. 
What's the reason? It's because um, the values are high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the values, that's the, 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 the numbers are quite high. So those with smaller numbers will really not be very clear to in the visualization. Exactly. So there are some extreme, um, you can even say outliers, right? Some districts, because we are just uh, comparing raw values here. What happens is like there are some districts, for example, fish districts, the, the numbers are really high. So really high, right. When we are trying to draw this graph, what uh, DHS2 has done is to accommodate that one, is that it has kind of scaled up uh, the, the y-axis and we are seeing like all these uh, uh, tick, tick marks are in like 100,000, right? So like, see, you can see it is crossing 400,000 mark. But when it does that, these small districts, uh, which has maybe less population, they are not that uh, uh, clearly, clearly displayed. To overcome this, what can we do? There is something very simple that we can do. We can click on options, right? And we can click here, stacked values at up to 100%. Right? So I just think of what we are doing, right? I, I just stick here and I click on update. And this is what I'm getting. Now, are you happy? Is this much better? Uh, what do you think? Much better. Much better. But but by making it better, what other changes happened in the chart? Now we see uh, all the visualizations, the stacked uh, columns clearly. But what else happened? What happened to the y-axis? Uh, actually, uh, the y-axis... We can compare the y-axis changes uh, between 0 to 100. Uh, yet before it was uh, between the lowest value up, uh, and the highest value on the graph. Ah, uh, all right. So that does that mean like all the values about hundred have been cut off, and we are only seeing from zero to hundred? Is that what happened, or something else happened? All the bars have been converted to uh, hundred, zero to hundred. They have brought they have been brought to the same uh, scale. So the absolute numbers. Uh, may not make sense with the axis. I exactly. think it would be better to uh, depict them as percentages. Yeah. So uh, in fact, like what has, what actually has happened here is uh, the percentages. Like you can see here, this is, I mean, so let me, let me show you again what we did. So what we did was we, we picked this option, which uh, does stacked values add up to hundred percent. So what it has actually done is it, it's kind of like make uh, all the values that are adding up to this uh, column as a proportion, right? So you have the row values uh, displayed as labels. You can see here 21,000 and 3,490, but in the y-axis, it's actually the proportion from zero to hundred percent. So basically what you're seeing here is a percentage, but if you actually want to have an idea about the row values in the data element, you can see it because we have the uh, row values mentioned here. Is that clear? That's actually what happened, okay? Right. And let me again show you something. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. I will just, uh, no, just keep it there. So in this stack value, can we compare uh, district wise? In this stack values, can we compare district wise? What do you think? Yeah. I, I don't think so because uh, everything is, uh, we have converted to 100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything is converted to 100. Like, but this is what happens. So for example, uh, I'm, I mean, again, I'm coming back to what I said before, maybe stacked column is not the ideal uh, chart type for comparison of trends. So like, let's just look at desert, uh, uh, the uh, dinner and dog districts. We can see the peri-urban uh, uh, proportion is lesser in uh, this one and it's higher, uh, highest in dog district, right? So likewise, you can compare, but still, like if you want to uh, compare between cat and uh, staple, right? Or maybe a couple of uh, more districts, it's not the best type of the charts. 
but still you can get uh, some sort of an idea so it, it totally depends on how you interpret and if you feel like okay this is this may not be the best visualization we need to go for a line chart you can do that right? so for example yeah sorry yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. So, um, is there any questions up to this point? If not, we can see uh, what other things which are available in these uh, options now that we have touched upon this uh, options tab in the DHIS2. Okay. So, let me click and open these options. Right, so here we have a couple of them. Like we have cumulative values, height, empty categories, custom sort order, trend line. Right, uh, these are the ones which are there in data tab, and we have axis tab. Right, and we have a series tab, and of course style. Right, so for example, now I mentioned uh, here we have the values that are displayed uh, in each of the bars. So if I just click on value labels and update. Let's see what happens. Now we don't see the values in this uh, in individual bars. Now, now does it make sense? We can still uh, see it if we hover our, uh, my mouse pointer, but if not, at a glance, you can't actually see the row values. So which one do you prefer? The one with the values or one without the values? The values. With the values, yeah, of course, because I mean, when we have the one with the values, we can uh, make better sense just by looking at it. So obviously I prefer that one, right? Okay. Uh, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Um, even though uh, most of the time we prefer to use uh, with values, but I think also it would depend uh, on the type of the audience you are presenting. Because uh, for example, when you are maybe with uh, some high level authorities they actual most of them they don't want even the exact values they want just to see which category is performing which category is suffering so i think it's all depends it, it most of the time to depend on the audience exactly so <laughs> i definitely uh like i have to agree with you like because it, it's totally up to you but you just have to know the limitations and you may need to think of uh, from the perspective of the end user so sure only only issue that that can happen is because sometimes maybe we are technically advanced we may not kind of see it from their angle like how confusing our visualization is or like whether they can make anything out of it so this is where this will we'll be discussing in uh, last day of or implementation considerations as well so this is where it is very important like once you have configured these visualizations and the dashboards you should always do a, a pilot so that you can get a feedback. You can ask from the end users, okay, what when you see this uh, chart in the dashboard, what do you understand? So we might think, okay, now they will be able to you know, compare and they will get an idea. So they will not repeat, the, I mean, they will have a, uh, they will look at it and maybe they will write an interpretation. I mean, uh, these are our expectations, but if they are not meeting our expectations, then there can be so many reasons. One of the reasons may be our visualizations are too complicated or like uh, it's very, um, I mean, like too advanced for the end users to grasp. So these things we'll have to consider. Okay. So right now our uh, X axis, uh, what we can do is now these axis, uh, we don't have any titles. So we can put axis titles, right? So here we have uh, what like um, for the Y axis, we can put a title called HIV tests. And we can click update to see how what changes it does. Yeah, you can see now it's uh, the HIV test which are uh, updated. I mean, we, we, we are seeing that we have a label here, right? And in addition, um, now there are a few other options in the axis as well. So for example, we can in fact uh, uh, set a range to the axis. To do that, uh, what I have to do is let me uh, disable this stacked values set up to 100. When I do that, right now I'm seeing I'm going back to the previous one. Now, one problem we had before was uh, we are, I mean, our y axis is from zero to 500,000, right? But what we can also do is like we can just, uh, if you want to just focus on this staple district or like few other districts like this, we can just try to uh, keep it at 100,000. So let me try to do that. 
I will just um, put an axis range. So let me set it to zero and maximum 100,000. And let's see what happens. What happened here? So now our axis is ranging from zero to 100,000. And you are nicely seeing that at least these uh, four districts, it has uh, reached this uh, 100,000 mark, right? But when you hover over this each of the columns, you are seeing it's exceeding 100,000. So what we essentially did was to uh, define a range in the y-axis, but this may not be a very good idea if you want to put uh, place this kind of a visualization as a permanent item on a dashboard, because easily uh, you might distract the user to believe that, okay, now it's just 100,000, that's it. No, it's not really the same. It's just that when you are trying to interpret or you you just uh, trying to present your dashboard to someone, at that point, you can do things like this, you know, like you limit the range of the uh, axis and try to focus on some districts, those kind of things you can do at that point, but maybe not a, a very good idea to save it and keep it as a dashboard item. Is that clear? Yes. So let me just get rid of it. Oh, sorry. And I'm having this visualization. Okay, right. And in addition, we also have um, in the axis uh, the steps, right? So steps is this tick steps. Let me set a value of like uh, ten here, yeah. and click update. And you can see these lines that you see, right? These shaded lines are the tick lines. So we have ten of them, right? So that's what it does. It automatically, like based on the uh, the range of the value, it may have like um, three or four, but if you want to increase the numbers, you can do like do it like that, right? So likewise, there are a few other things that you are you can do and uh, you can try them out. I'm not going to do everything. And here, uh, when you put these labels, uh, even the text, you can um, select a color and make it bold or italic and also select the size and the position, the alignment also you can set, right? So for example, if I want to put it at end, make it bold, click update, this is what happened. It was previously here, now it has moved to here. Okay, right. Fine, so uh, any questions uh, on what we have done so far in this session? If not, I'm trying to move on to the next chart type, which is bar charts, right? Then uh, we will also touch upon target lines. Right, so, okay. Now what I will try to do now is to convert this chart to a bar chart. Uh, in fact, a uh, stacked bar chart. So it's so easy to do that. I just uh, change the stacked column to stacked bar. That's the only change I do. And I keep these as it is and I click on update. And let's see what happens. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Is there any way to change the colors of those uh, charts? Uh, sorry, uh, I didn't get what? I mean, is there any way to change the colors of the, those bar charts? The colors of the bar charts, okay. So there are options. Um, what we can do is there is something called uh, slide, right? In, in the style tab, I, I didn't uh, uh, touch that one yet, but uh, I will just do it, show it because it is already there. So there are some uh, color sets that we can, uh, you know, like uh, change. So let me set it to gray and update. And this is what happens. So right now we have preset colors on this version 2.35 that we can set, but uh, this is something that keeps on changing. So for example, 2.627 versions, they are trying to look at, uh, you know, like to introduce legend sets so that uh, you can apply the legend colors. But ultimately uh, there'll be more flexibility in time to come to change the colors because this is one of the highly requested uh, features in DHIS2. But as of uh, 2.34, this is all what we can do. We can change the colors uh, uh, based on this uh, color sets that is there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me also make this one 100% stack. So this is what we have. Okay. So we are uh, now, now, all right. So can you comment on what has now happened? What was the difference between stacked uh, stacked column and stacked bar? What are the changes that you observe?
Yeah, obviously you can see like previously it was vertical lines. Now you have horizontal lines. So that answer I have, it's from my end. Like any other changes that you see? Can you comment on series category and filter and how it has changed uh, from stacked uh, column to stacked palm? Anything change or it's the same? So you can see right here, now these are the, uh, now for example, in the column chart, our categories, the category dimension was in the x-axis, okay? But what has happened to category dimension now? It has moved to? This, this Y, right? And the data is now in the x-axis. So it's kind of flipped. Uh, from uh, I mean the axis which are there in column and bra the the bar charts they have flipped okay right so that's one major difference that you have to note but obviously um, I mean like uh, it doesn't make a major difference uh, to the end users but uh, the layout and the visualization and how pleasing it is is uh, what you have to decide when you are uh, you know like comparing between uh, putting a bar chart or a column chart. Now, again, going back to the options, right? Um, we have uh, looked at uh, the color set that is to change the colors of this, uh, uh, this, the series. And we can also put a title, right? So that option is there. So right now, what happens is the title is auto-generated, right? But we, if we want to put our own title, what we can do is we can click on custom, right? And I can put my own title. So I will put HIV tests by locality and district, right? And I keep it at center, maybe bold, right? And update. Now you are seeing, okay? This is the HIV test locality and district that uh, that's the uh, title that appears. So it, uh, it has replaced the previous auto-generated title. That's what happened. Similarly, if we want to, you know, um, get rid of uh, now currently, we have a subtitle. If you don't like the subtitle, we can click on none and update. And you see that the subtitle previously, which was there, it, it is now disappeared. Okay. Right. And we also have a tab here called download. And let me show you what happens. It's quite straightforward. When I click on download, I can download this visualization as an image or as a PDF. And there are other uh, types like uh, JSON, Excel, CSV, and so many others. If you want to uh, uh, take the raw data out of this visualization, and maybe you want to create a, a, a different uh, graph or chart outside the DHIS2. So for that one, you can use it. But um, here, if I click on image, it will download the image and the image will be uh, Visualize like this. So note that image will have uh, the titles and the access titles that we have uh, custom, uh, we have defined when we are doing the configuration. Okay. Right. All right. So uh, any questions up to this point? Fine. If not, uh, let me now uh, uh, create a new chart. So to create a new chart, what I can do is I uh, click on file and then new, right here. And uh, let me select a different uh, indicator. So to do that, I click on data dimension and I select indicators and let me search EPT. I guess it is not available. Immunization coverage. Okay, these two. Uh, now I want to select EPT hepatitis. Uh, B, HIP1 coverage and one coverage. So I'm going to select these two indicators and I select it here. So my data is selected, right? And then the period I keep from, uh, I mean, 12 months, which comes by default. 
And then the organization unit, I keep it as training lab. And then I click on update. And by default, it was selected on the chart. And this is what I see. Right. Uh, anybody has any questions? All right, uh, so we are back to, uh, with this uh, particular visualization, which is a column chart. And what we can do is there is something called, now, uh, right now, you are seeing two, two indicators. One is the, uh, uh, the one coverage, and the second one is DPD three coverage, right? So you are seeing two different bars for each of the period, time, uh, period which is available. And this data is currently now so uh, just uh, displayed uh, as it is. Uh, like that, what I mean by as it is, is like uh, it's just per month, uh, the whatever the values it is now displayed. Okay. So let me just uh, flip this uh, chart a bit so that what I can do is I can just uh, uh, move organization unit to the x axis and period I will keep as filter, right? So what, what, what my objective is, I want to have. Uh, instead of the periods, the, the, the months in the x-axis, I want to have all the districts right in the x-axis. So to do that, uh, now I have done this, but only thing right now it's a training land. So to get the districts, what I have to do is, I will uh, just select the training land, I will scroll down and I have to select the uh, level district. Okay, then only the districts will have come. So let me just uh, show what happens if I don't select the district, I will just keep it as it is and I click on update. Right. This is what I get because these two bars just represent the training land. So to change it, what I will do is I will scroll all the way down and select the district, right? And click on update. And this is what I get. Okay. Right. So we have data from a bird, cat, desert, dinner, likewise. And what I'm going to do is I just click on options, right? And then there is something called custom sort order. Now, the thing is my objective in this visualization is I should be able to easily compare between the district. So right now it's a bit difficult to compare because the values are not in a proper order. So to do that, I just click on custom sort order and I will uh, select low to high and I click on update. So what actually happened? You can now see that the uh, the order that was previously there has now changed. Of course, the bird district is here, but like sweet district, which was previously here, has come here. Okay, right. Now, has it been sorted? Or oh, do you have any questions about this sorting? Uh, yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, is it? it is the order, the increasing order sorted based on, um, because I see the green bar and the, and the blue bar all going in the same order, was it not re-sorted? Yeah, good question. So what has actually happened is when we do that, when we do this sorting, it will always take the uh, data element, which is at the top. So here, now please remember this order. Now it's bird, dessert. Uh, so you can just maybe look at the fish and insect, the order of that one. Like, let me uh, show you something. I click on data, right? And I just try to flip it. So three comes first and uh, one comes after that. And I click on update. Now what happened? Right? So it always take into consideration the one that is, uh, so it should be taking the f this one, like right? So because like one which is at the top, or is it not? It should ideally be taking the one which is at the top. Uh, I mean, the one which is here. So here also it is, yes. It's actually the uh, the green one is DPT3 coverage. So it always take only the DPT3 coverage, which is the first one, which is appearing on the uh, the list, right? Do you see that? Don't, don't, do, don't uh, try to remember with the colors. Now the colors also have flipped. I just wanted to understand because it was initially DPT1. But now it's a DPT three, 
uh, based on which it is, the, the sorting order is arranged. Is that clear? So whichever one, if there are more uh, uh, dimension, more data items which are there in the series dimension, is whichever the one right at the top is the one that is taken into consideration when it, when it is at, uh, uh, sort uh, when it is sorting, whether it is uh, from low to high or high to low. Okay. Right. And also, let me show you something. Now, here uh, we have two items in the series, right? One is in green, other one is in blue. So when we hover over each of the one in this uh, the legend, you can see that that one is getting highlighted. And in, and similarly, if you want to hide it in the visualization, we just click here, and you are only seeing the one that is enabled. So basically, you are now seeing only the uh, DPT one coverage, right? You can do like this. It's only DPT three. Now nothing, right? So that way you can click and disable, enable uh, the visualizations, right? Okay. Let me also show you something. Uh, in addition, we can draw some lines, right? So basically, when you look at this data, we we see like a lot of data is in this fifties, uh, sixties range. So if we uh, want. Uh, if we expect, like at the country level, we can uh, set a target. We call it setting a target, right? So say, for example, if we can um, set a target of 80 for the and put it as target coverage, right? And let me click on update. And this is what happened. Can you see? Like uh, we can draw this line horizontally and give it a name, a label called target coverage. So when we have this kind of a line in between, it's, it really helps us to uh, see which uh, districts have uh, performed above the target, which are less, right? So it's just a line that uh, we draw on this visualization. So similarly, there are a few other lines, right? We have baseline. So baseline also, we can set that value. So let me just put 10 for now. And I click update. You can see this one, right? It's baseline. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. Fine. So I guess that's it for the columns and bars. I think we can move to the uh, pie charts next. But before that, I think we can take a little bit of a break. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, before we leave this uh, slide, I have seen, yeah, been trying that when you click on one of the um, categories let me say one of uh, for example here we have ap dpt three coverage and the uh, one coverage i've seen that when you click on one of them the other ones um, uh, is somehow hidden yeah so what if we try to download this will it uh, yeah let's bring on the one selected Let's try to do it. So I'm going to click on download here. Yes. An image. Mm -hmm. This is what happens, right? So it does not hide it uh, in the download. So basically download takes into consideration the permanent type of uh, changes that we do. So whatever yeah. we're doing here, uh, it's not uh, appearing in the download. So in case you want to just totally hide it, the best way is you just remove it, uh, you know, like from this uh, dimension and try to download. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Fine. So I think we can take a break. Uh, how much of time we have? We are kind of at the midways. Yeah. Yeah. Today is a kind of a lengthy day because there are so many uh, topics to cover. So uh, yeah, I think uh, we can take a little bit of a break uh, and maybe meet again in in ten minutes time. Is that fine? So uh, in the meantime, what you can do is, uh, so, okay, now uh, I, I would ask you from, uh, I mean, like I, I will give you the opportunity to decide. So uh, there are two things we can do. We can actually try to do the uh, ungraded exercise part three and four now, right? Or else uh, we can proceed with the sessions and towards the end, you can do both the ungraded and graded. Uh, which option you prefer? If you want to practice, uh, we can uh, do it for like 10 minutes. 
Okay, I guess no. You, you may continue. You may continue. Ten minutes. You want break? <laughs> All right. It seems like at least yeah, few minutes. Ten minutes. Break. All right. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So, uh, please try to like uh, if you want a break, you can take a break of ten minutes, or else during the break, uh, you I mean whoever who's uh, comfortable continuing, you can uh, proceed with the uh, the unbraided exercises, and we will resume the next session uh, in ten minutes. Right. So local time is three zero two. So maybe in eight minutes. Sorry about that. So we'll start again at uh, three ten local time. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. And let us know the word of the week. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's what I'm going to start with. 